Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razavani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got my man, the very own, the finest strength and conditioning trainer in the world, Mr. Larry Wade, uh, all the way from Las Vegas. Larry, it's been a minute. Yes, thank you for having me, Brian. You know, it's always an honor. I'm always feel blessed to be part of the program. And, I'll, and here's the crazy thing about our interviews. They seem like basic conversation to me, which makes the, conver- makes the interview amazing. So... I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see you're healthy. And I hope everybody else out there is healthy as well. Yeah, uh, no, likewise, I can only echo those words. Always a pleasure having you on. Um, But yeah, that's just a style, uh, Coach. Um, I like to converse rather than have a script written of 20 questions and it's just bounce off the conversation. And that's, uh, hopefully we we gather the audience in a much more kind of close close way. Um, But When we spoke last time, we were in the midst of uh, COVID-19, a pandemic, yes. the world crashing, lockdowns upon lockdowns. I know Las Vegas wasn't as bad before. Um, it seems like we got over it and it seemed like it's come back again here in the UK. But what's the situation like currently in, uh, in Las Vegas? I, I believe it to be the same. We, our numbers went down over the last couple of months. But this month has already increased, and I think it's going to continue to increase as the weather change. We're transitioning into more of a cold element. So as it gets colder, along, the same way like the flu season, they're expecting for it to increase. In the last month, I want to say it's already increased maybe 5 to 8%. So, yeah, I'm expecting for it to get bad again. But if we're smart and we do the right thing, we should be able to, you know, get past this just like we do anything else. It's been tough here in the UK. We've had a very, very recently, we've had a couple of fighters that a couple of days before the fight were tested before going into a kind of like a bubble. Um, right. Unfortunately, test positive. So it meant right. the whole training camp, the whole f- preparation, right. the dieting, the sparring, right. all got wasted, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we saw Eddie Hearn himself actually test positive. Um, wow. So... Is, is it quite scary thinking about that? Like, I know you're pre- you're preparing at the moment, Badu Jack, for his right. in November, and Vidal Riley as well. You did train right. water not long ago, but is it, right. is it does that go through the back of your mind that nowadays they say you could have the virus but have no symptoms? You know, I try not to think about it. I think when we uh, put it in the front of our, our mind, it actually gets in the way of what we're supposed to do. You know, there, there are things that you that you can do because you have to, and then there's things that you do for just for fun. This is one of those things that from a work standpoint that we have to do. These guys are fighters. They have to fight. We just have to do our due diligence and making sure everything is done according to the protocols that they set forth for us. At one point, um, I had basically three fights in one week. I had uh, Rolando Romero who fought for the WBA, WBA interim lightweight title, who won. And then uh, that was on a Saturday. The following week was Jeremiah Milton, heavyweight, who fought on the UFC pass card. I think that was on a Tuesday or either a Thursday. And then the following Saturday, which was seven days later, Sean Porter fought. Well, the way the protocol is set up is you have to be able to test at least twice for each fighter if you're in their bubble. And I was in... Uh, Rolly Rolando's, you know, Romero's bubble and also Sean Porter. So I'm testing three to four times a week with that, you know, sticking it in the nose. And even though I didn't like it, I understood it. And and even then I had to pay uh, a couple of sacrifices where, you know, Rolly was fighting Connecticut for the, for the title. And then the very next week, Sean Porter's supposed to fight in L.A. Well, I definitely got a call and told me I couldn't go to both. You had to pick one or the other because – they can't take a chance on either one of them being contaminated in, in the travel, but they were really more concerned about Sean because he was the second fight and not the first fight. And so if I would have went to the fight Connecticut, then I could not have gone to the fight in California with Sean. So I wasn't able to go. Uh, all the things were done via phone, 
you know, FaceTime, Zoom, so I can com communicate with him to get the work done. And he walked out victorious. Uh, with Sean Porter's situation, this was the first time I really truly experienced the bubble, right? What they talked about. We went to California early, about a week in advance on that Monday. And I have to give hats off to PBC how they handled themselves from a protocol standpoint. We arrived in the front. They took all our bags, but took us through the back, down the stairs where no one had access but them and the doctors. Uh, I was a little nervous. I was like, what about my bags? And like, we're going to take care of it. And end up, they took the bags, but they wanted to spray everything down first. So they sprayed all the bags down before we had access to it. It took us immediately to the basement where we had COVID testing. Took us up through the uh, service elevator in the back where only the boxers could use. And it, that service elevator only took us to the second floor. The second floor was the main location for all boxers and trainers. They gave us these bands. We had to check in through the computer two or three times and also write, you know, if we have a temperature and these type of things. And they took us to our room on the fourth floor where the only way you can get to that floor was through the second floor, which you had to have a band to get to the fourth floor. And then the first day we were under quarantine for 24 hours where we couldn't leave the room at all. We had to stay there. And they brought us our food and uh, it, was, it was cool. You know, you can only Netflix so much though, right? So uh, we was in the room for 24 hours and immediately after that, once we passed our COVID test, then we were allowed 22 hours of quarantine, but yet we had a couple hours to train with the athlete. We weren't allowed to leave the fourth and or second floor of the hotel for about five or six days. And for the people who are used to being able to roam the work earth, meaning just drive around, whatever, it started driving me crazy. We're in these rooms and the only thing you can do is watch TV and train for two hours a day, be right back in the room you know, watching TV and eating whatever it is that they bring to you. But it was a challenge. But at the end of the day, they, they made us check in every morning. We have to give temperature checks every morning. We have to give another COVID test uh, the day before the fight just to make sure we were okay. They still made us do a temperature check the day of the fight. And uh, we came out of that. Everybody was negative and they came out with a victory. But it was, it's a process, but it's worth it if it's going to keep people alive and get people what the fans are really looking for and those, those fights. It doesn't seem like this, this particular virus is going to go away anytime soon. So okay. is, it, is, it, is it hard to, to think that the next six to 12 months, this might be the protocol moving forward? It's not hard to believe. As a matter of fact, I think it will be. I think we'll have this in place at least the next two years or something similar to it. I think it will be watered down at some point once they come up with some type of you know, answer for it. But I think that it, it helped wake us all up to what can really happen if we don't if we don't pay attention and we don't do the things we're supposed to do. The, the virus gets worse when we don't pay attention to it, when we don't do the things that we should be doing, like cleaning our hands, you know, keeping ourselves clean, staying six feet apart, keeping our masks on, which I have right here, by the way. And uh, when we don't do those things, you know, it allows for the virus to spread. And being part of the university here at, you know, UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, they make it mandatory for us to test as well. We test for them once a week, every week. And if you don't test, if you don't test, you don't go to work, you know, because it's just too crucial. But two people's lives are being lost. I've even lost two lives in the, in the past couple of months. So, you know, I'm not the only one. Half the world is having the same thing happen. So we got to be safe. And, and for me, being that I train a lot of high level elite athletes. If you ever heard any of the things I've ever said about my training, the number one thing you've ever you've heard me say, I take this serious because people's lives are on the line and I can't be held responsible for not having them prepared for the fight. I feel the same way with this, with this disease or this virus, should I say. I don't wanna be the reason why any of my athletes or their families come up with the COVID. So I take extreme, responsibility in that report in that side of things so I do test a lot even when they don't ask me to just simply because I don't want to be the one to get him or their families infected I take that responsibility serious so I think this is what's going to be for the next couple of years um coach Badu 
was had a draw against Pascal. We were hoping to see that rematch take place. I know they were very, very close. I'm sorry, another draw. Uh, I know that oh, rematch was supposed okay. to take place. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, it's it's slowed down and it's not happening just yet. I spoke to Badu a couple of days ago, actually, we did an interview and he, he said that was the fight he wanted. He's obviously fighting um, Blake McKernan, I believe that's the name, top of my head, uh, on, right. a, on a Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. undercard. Um, right. It seems like an exhibition. So from a Badu perspective, we know he's an athlete, he's a professional, but are you still putting him through those rough, tough paces uh, for Blake? In November, you know what's crazy? Badu came to me, and this is before this fight even came to fruition. He told me exactly what he wanted to do for this camp, and this is before we even knew who was going to be the, the opponent. He wanted to get stronger, and and what people don't realize in the last camp, uh, Badu wasn't as strong as I wanted him to be. He was in, first of all, his fitness was amazing, but. He wasn't as strong as I wanted him to be because we had a, a, a small setback in the camp. And so I didn't get the strength as long as I wanted to. He would never say that. You know, he's never going to make excuses. And even though I think he won the fight, you know, uh, he wasn't as strong as I needed him to be. And uh, that's because, we, like, once again, we had a small setback, that, which didn't allow us to do a lot of the strength work that we normally would do. And so when we came back to this camp, he says, I want to be stronger than I've ever been. And when I tell you he's the strongest I've ever seen him, he's stronger than I've ever seen. Now, you know, he's working with uh, Banks as a coach. And the stylistically, he's changing some things up with it, which I like. So I'm expecting Badu to go out and perform really well and uh, do things a little differently than you've seen in previous fights. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, wait, I'm waiting to see, though. But we didn't, we didn't necessarily – focus on this guy in front of us from, from a training standpoint, preparing for him. We were preparing just in a very general sense. And then once he got selected as being the guy, we put all attention on what is what needs to be done for this fight. But prior to this, we really worked on him getting stronger. And from a fitness standpoint, he if you go and watch the fight, he closed out the fight well. So he didn't have a fitness issue at all. So we're going to do the same thing for this guy. Even though it's eight rounds, we're not looking at him like he's a, a guy who's not can cause damage. We're looking at him as a guy who we need to get out of here and uh, take him serious because evidently he is confident enough in some things he's saying and doing to believe that he can get Badu out. So we're going we're gonna to see about that. Badu's not the main event. The main event is Mike Tyson, Roy, Roy Jones. A lot of question marks about this fight, about whether – well, Mike Tyson hasn't been in the ring for about 15 or 16 years. We know Roy's been a little bit more active in the gym, um, but people are worried about health because boxing is a brutal sport. Um, do you expect both of them to literally go guns blazing and try and go and knock each other out? Because that's the only thing we know about Mike Tyson. Well, <laughs> I'm going to try to answer that the best way I can. And that is, whenever you're training, and I, and I was talking to some of my athletes today. You, you train a person to have a fight. And when the fight situation comes up, whether the, no matter what the sport is, they've been conditioned to respond a certain way. The moment that you put someone in a position that's been trained to fight at a high level and tell them just to go on cruise control or just relax or accepting it's the moment that their lives and their careers are basically over in that sport. These guys have fought at the highest level. And regardless of the age, they've been trained and conditioned over years to only go one way. And that when the bell rings and they see the opponent on the other side, to go at it. Now, the moment that an athlete doesn't have that is the moment that you see they get knocked out or they get hurt. I think these two guys, uh, when the bell rings, go at it. I think they hit hard for no jump. I don't think it lasts the distance, though. I think they're going to put so much on the front side of this fence that nothing's going to be on the back side of the fence, right? But, you know, I could be wrong. I, I really I highly doubt them uh, trying to pace themselves for the entire fight. I see them trying to hurt the next person and see how quick this fight can be over. Because I want to ask you another question. This has been pondering on my mind over the last couple of weeks, um, and I was waiting to speak to you to ask you this. But 
boxing has developed so much into uh, a science now where it's yes. not just about pads and mitts and punch bag and skipping but there's more to it and strength and conditioning we saw Dillian White uh, take a take a dramatic loss mm-hmm. in August to Povetkin with who crushed him with a huge punch that knocked him out mm-hmm. unconscious almost now uh, as our as the fight ended I was going through my Twitter and people were talking about how Dylan, well, they were referring to Dylan, but were saying he was focusing too much on strength and conditioning and not learning the art of boxing. Now, we've seen him mm-hmm. traditionally, you know, uh, George Foreman, Ali, you know, we used to see clips of him running on the road, skipping, punch bag. I don't even think they had mitts back then. So it was very limited, and they were doing 15 rounds you know, Mm -hmm. comfortably. And they were probably stronger athletes as well because, you know, junk food and the type of food they ate was probably a lot more cleaner and natural then than it is now. So how important is strength and conditioning and where would you put it (laughs) when it comes to to boxing and sparring and stuff like that? I'll say this. How important is having a driver's license when you drive a car? It's not important unless you get pulled over. So it's not important until, unless you run into someone that you really need it with, right? And so um, I'm a firm believer in understanding what my position is in the sport of boxing. I've had this conversation with Sean Porter where I told Sean we were referring one day to trainers and um, I explained this to him and I really do mean this. So uh, for everyone who's listening, please pay attention. I can get someone in amazing shape amazing shape i mean i can make you strong as you could possibly ever be amazing that just means you're gonna get beat up longer that's what that means skills pay the bills in boxing if you don't have the skills and you're not focusing on the things that's going to allow you to stay in that ring it doesn't matter what a strength conditioning coach does they're going to get you out of here so I told Sean, look, at the end of the day, I can get you prepared, but it's Kenny Porter that's going to help you win this fight. And so can you win fights without a strength conditioning coach? Sure. When you get to the highest level, can you win it? Yeah, but not likely. It's harder because those guys are high-level athletes who are being trained not only from a boxing skill standpoint, which is first and foremost, but they're also getting the proper nutrition. They have the proper nutritionist around. They also have the proper strength conditioning coaches around. I always tell people this, let me see your corner and I can tell you what your day is going to be like. If if you got a strong corner where you have a strong trainer, strong cut man, strong nutritionist, strong strength conditioning coach, it's a good chance that you're going to raise your percentage to a high level of winning. Because in essence, that's what you're doing. You give me those four areas, right? Let's just say you got four areas. And even though these percentages are off, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. If the cut man is not good and the fight can lose, be lost because of it, and I'm putting a lot by saying 25% on the cut man, then you lower your, you say, you give that person a 10. You just lost 15. So you got an 85% chance. Your strength conditioning coach is a 10, right? Now you're like a 70% chance. Your trainer could be a 10, right? So your odds continue to fall. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the result, but you definitely lower your chances by not having those strong components in the corner. Interesting, interesting. But in terms of science itself, how much has science helped you now with (laughs) all these technological advances that we have now? I see people wearing these masks and running on treadmills and checking Mm -hmm. all sorts of temperatures and heart rates and pulse rates, but is this a necessity now why is it a necessity now and how how did the previous greats get away and be so good without this technology now well just like anything else technology has evolved and everyone has to evolve with it think about how life was before we got computers or what life was like before we got cell phones which i'm talking to you in a whole nother country right we had communication in, on the phones only, right? We definitely couldn't see one another. Uh, what those guys had at that time was great for that time. 
you know, the evolution, the understanding, based on what they knew, they were up to date on everything that was available. So they fought based on that component. And the same thing now, you know, we've evolved tremendously. Now, the athletes, I don't, I'm not going to say the athletes are better than they are now. I think they're great now. I just think that back then, uh, the availability and what was popular was different. So a lot of the top athletes did other things. I mean, boxing wasn't the premier sport, just like it's not now, but football is the, the star sport in the U.S. And so most young men, especially who come from like poverty areas, want to be the world-class NFL guy or they want to be the next LeBron James of basketball. Most guys aren't trying to put themselves in a position to get hit in the face. So you'll see a lot of the top athletes go after these sports. Now, as we make the sports more popular with social media and actually putting it back on TV now, you're going to see more of the talent look that direction. And if you look at the heavyweight division, specifically, a lot of football players, once they don't make it in the NFL, then they try to transition to boxing because this is one of the other areas that their bodies can be used. And But I do believe that up to that time, they did what they could do based on the knowledge that was provided. And back then, cardio was the number one thing. People would run miles on top of miles on top of miles and, and learn about how to get a guy in shape through an aerobic standpoint. And trainers just the, the, I mean, the actual boxer became a trainer, and then the trainer trained another boxer who became the trainer. So the knowledge was kind of being passed down through that concept, opposed to when strength and conditioning got truly introduced in the 60s and the 70s. They had world champions in the boxing game way before that. They were doing 15 rounds or more. But they also learned that guys weren't living as long either. They were dying early. Because you're taking 15 rounds of just getting hit in the head with no one breaking it up. Now we're a little bit smarter. And I think what's happened is um, it's not as glamorous as it once was. So the athletes leave and we protect ourselves a little bit more. You mentioned in the heavyweight division. I just want to get your opinion. Uh, announced this week in the UK, uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder were supposed to have this trilogy fight. Taking right. place, I believe, in July this year. Pandemic postponed it. It was going to be October. Didn't take place, and then the date that was out there was December nineteenth. Um, Tyson Fury and his and his team have come out and said that we are not fighting the trilogy fight. Uh, time has expired on the contract. We haven't really heard a lot from Deontay Wilder for the last six seven months. Been relatively quiet, and we also found out uh, via a Dan Raphael uh, story that he had split with Mark Breland, who had been in his corner for a very very long time just want to right. your reaction to that whole scenario and and what you make of it well you know i know them personally and um his his strength conditioning coach joey scott is actually my mentee so he and i have a very close relationship so i have a more of an insight on how things are going with them and i believe that they will and are disappointed by the inability to get that fight but uh They've been really uh, working hard on trying to revamp, recreate um, the greatness needed from this champ because he's an amazing champion. And uh, in doing that, I think they want to be able to create a new avenue. Now, I do believe what Mark did, what he did, uh, he was doing what he thought was best for you know, Deontay. And I don't, I don't regret saying that. I think that's what really happened. But I think now what he's trying to do is create more of a uh, new solution because we truly understand that the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. And so if you feel like this is going to give you the same result as you got before, it's smart business for you to be able to make a decision that you feel like is going to work for you and your business. So I respect Mark Braylon. I respect him for years. I respect Deontay. And I think that once they settle down on what they're doing and how they're doing it, you're going to see uh, a, a improved Deontay Wilder, not only just physically, but mentally. I think you'll see a, a guy in there who has now tasted uh, failure to some degree. And the worst thing for a guy who's always tasted success is not to have that again. So 
He's going to come back competitive. He's going to come back aggressive. He's going to come back in shape. And you're going to see another exciting fight as soon as he gets back in the ring. There were a few rumors flying around that Malik Scott, who we know is quite close to Monte Wilder, somebody I know very well as well, that might take a more of a, a senior type role uh, in the team. Is there anything you can say? I can't help you with that. I don't have that answer. I don't have that answer. And honestly, even if I did, I wouldn't. <laughs> Just simply because, uh, you know, I, I think that's something, some information they need to you know, relay out to the public if that is an option, you know. I do know that uh, Deontay is a great person. I do know that he doesn't allow a lot of people into his circle. And if you bring someone into the circle, it's someone that he trusts. So if that is the case, this is an individual who he, I would say he trusts to be there, to be able to help him in this particular situation. I was going to touch on before I finish, obviously, Vidal Riley. Um, he's also going to be fighting, I believe, on, on Badu Jack's uh, card. Yes. Um, especially Vidal, Vidal as well during the pandemic and I was just speaking to him about the transition between normally when you start off as a professional in you you start off in your native country you go through the the traditional routes of the local area titles the British title the Commonwealth the European uh, and he said I'm doing things my way and w the way the things work for me which is in Las Vegas sign with May with the promotions but how do you assess his career so far and Obviously, everyone stumbled so far because of the pandemic, but are you looking to push him even more in 2021? Man, listen, the best thing this young man could have said is the way he said it to you. In order for you to really find your true greatness, man, you got to do it your way, right? It's the only way you're going to get there. Now, I feel like Adele is around enough high-level people who are doing this thing at the high level to be able to negotiate, navigate his own direction. I mean, he got Amir Abdallah, who's his manager, who's a guy who's been a former world champion himself. And he also manages Badu Jack, and even myself, as a matter of fact. He, he manages a lot of us. And um, he's around these guys on, on a full-time basis. And then he signs with Mayweather Promotions, which is which Floyd Mayweather's company, which is considered to be one of the best fighters ever in the history of the sport who was also, you know, ran by Luna Ellaby. He got a lot of high-level people around him. He has me as a strength conditioning coach, along with my assistant, Paul. I call him the Paul, right? But he, he has a lot of successful people and positive people around him. So I don't feel as if he has to go the traditional route of being dictated to what he should do to get to that opportunity. Kind of like a ryan garcia ryan is doing it his own way you know he signed with golden boy but he's he's making his own moves and making his own decisions along the way and i think that is the direction that the sport is going to go you got guys who are amazing and i think they should have the opportunity to kind of dictate and determine you know which direction their career should go and also a rumor was going around about floyd mayweather potentially coming back into a fight against Logan Paul. Logan Paul obviously lost to your man, KSI. So yeah, yeah. when you hear about that, and, and again, these are exhibition, and, and I, I feel Floyd has the right to go and do that because he's fought everybody in the professional ring. Uh, some people may argue otherwise, but both Logan Paul and KSI have millions of followers. With KSI winning, surely his profile probably a little bit more bigger in the boxing industry. But uh, would you... Would you entertain that? Would you like to see KSI getting hit with someone like Floyd Mayweather? Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's 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 talk. Are we talking KSI? Or are we talking Logan Paul? KSI. Listen, I personally um, am friends with both both individuals, and I think from an entertainment standpoint, it'll be in an entertainment. Uh, storm. I think the whole world will be lit up about it. The whole world will be excited to see it. But the thing is, you get a guy like Floyd Mayweather, you're talking about one of the best to ever do it, right? In the sport, regardless of the weight, the weight difference. KSI is a dog. I told him that when I first met him. You got you got this dog in you. I want to pull it out you. And if you saw in that Logan Paul, he showed that he got this dog in him. He get hit, he come back, he's swinging every direction. But with Floyd, got a dog 
and the skill set, right? So I, I would want to see it from an entertainment standpoint, but from a training standpoint, being that I, I am close to both of them, I don't want to see it <laughs> because I kind of feel torn. Like, oh, who do I want to win? You know, this is my guy and this is my guy. So it's a it's a hard thing. But you know, Floyd putting Floyd in the ring with anyone, you know, that's going to be a hard ticket to try to follow. He's a, he's one of the best to ever do it. So I don't care if it's Logan Paul in there or not. You put Logan in there. Come on, man. It's it guy's for uh, Floyd's skill set is absolutely amazing. Even if he's out of shape. And he's not out of shape. That's the thing. He's not out of shape. Just finally before I end a uh, big fight tomorrow uh Saturday that is in 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 the states. I would probably say it's probably the best fight in the whole lockdown period with Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez. We know Teofimo has been in the, the mayor of the boxing gym. I'm, I'm sure you've seen him spar in the gym as well. Um, right. Regarded as an unbelievable athlete, has great skill set and can punch. And we've seen a different side from Lomachenko here. We've seen him a bit more, uh, he seems quite angry about this in a calm way. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, he's, he's angry. You can see it. He's, he's, he's a little irritated by it. He's focused. He's super focused on it. Uh, I just had this interview with Sean Porter uh, just the other day on a Porter Way podcast, and uh, we weren't even supposed to do it, but we had a discussion that turned to be heated, and he was like, come over to the house. We're going to talk about this on the, on the internet. And uh, I picked Teofimo, and he was like, absolutely not, Lomachenko, which is what we knew. I knew he was going to say that. And, I, and I'm going to say to you the same thing I said to him. I am a fan of both. I like both of those guys. Both those guys are amazing. So – that's what makes this fight so so great to be able to watch both two guys who I am fans of. Lomachico it, with his uh, skill set, boxing skill set, also being so poised in the pocket, uh, fighting in angles. And then Teofimo, who is a young, uh, aggressive, powerful, athletic world champion himself. This makes for an amazing fight. I told Sean that, um, and, and just so you know, I've seen Teofimo in the ring with Sean, actually. And uh, he's had to take a punch or two from Sean that was pretty heavy. And he stood this ground and came right back at him. So I know he got dog in him. I've seen it. So I know what kind of young man he is. And when he asked me to just pick, I picked Teofimo on top of all the different athletic things. But the most important part for me was I actually know Teofimo. I don't know Lomachenko, so I'm going to go with the guy I know, right? So that's just kind of how I ended it. Like, I'm going to go with him because I know him. And on top of that, he, he's a world champion. He's great at what he does. So I don't think it's a bad choice. In this particular fight, there is no loser. It's only winners. Absolutely, and we look forward to that. Coach, uh, thank you so much for jumping on. Before I get my notification from Zoom to say I'm making the meeting to time is expiring. Uh, <laughs> as we did last time but as always always a pleasure having you on thank um, you brother thank you wish you continue health during this crazy crazy time yourself your family members uh, your friends and associates you. around you i gotta get you a shirt this time i can ship international now before i can ship international so i gotta get you a coast layer way b shirt or savage shirt or something you want the mask you want the mask okay <laughs> uh, and we'll definitely catch up with you soon Coach yes, Larry sir. Raid for IFO TV. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.